We all know that paddle tail swim baits have been catching bass for, since they started with I think the sassy shad. You know, a lot of things have changed since then, and there's a lot of ways you can rig them to get a few more bites. You know, I have multiple different ways rigged up. So I'm gonna dive into each of these setups right here and show you guys how I rig a soft plastic swim bait. All right, guys, I have my finesse rod set up with my little three inch Largo shad on a ball head. You know, very typical finesse application. Great for smallmouth fishing, spotted bass, and largemouth too. Do not forget on, don't sleep on them largemouth. When they get real fickle in the fall, this is one of my favorite little baits to throw. When they're schooling or acting weird, that's what's a really good deal. This is actually a 3 16 ounce a hybrid swim bait jig from BMC. It doesn't get a lot of attention on tour, but is a really good technique in getting bites when the bite is tough. Next up is the four inch Largo Shad. You know, this is actually rigged on a ball head jig as well, but this is a little bit on casting gear, 12 pound suffix, four carbon. You know, and, and this is something that, you know, it's still that finesse application, I feel like, but you know, this is more of a standard size swim bait, you know, about a four inch. Uh, this is actually a half ounce head. You know, you could, you could rig it up with like five sixteenths. Um, I thought I was throwing a half, actually a little bit deeper water, about 20 foot of water. So really versatile deal, but you can downsize or upsize, you know, the weight, depending on really where you're fishing at, you know, but this bait right here catches a lot of fish. And if you're trying to really match that forge and you have a little bit larger forge or they're just that typical four inch size, that's when I just try to pick this thing up. And if I can get away with casting gear, this is normally what I'm gonna to try to pick up. You know, I use this on, on, on ledges, I use this on grass lines, I use it fishing over brush piles and fishing, you know, schooling fish. You know, this, anywhere you would throw a swim bait, but the versatility of a swim bait, and specifically the Largo Shad, it's endless. I mean, there's so many different applications, and this dude right here is really my workhorse. If there's one way I rig this bait, this is probably my favorite way on casting gear with that little bit lighter line, 10 to 12 pound line. It just catches fish all over the country from every different size to every different species. Another way to rig the Largo Shad is on a Tokyo rig. You know, this is not the conventional way you would think of rigging a swim bait, but you know, when the fish are really deep, I have oh, buddies way goodness. up north that have that catch big oh, smallmouth, you know, on wintering holes for smallmouth. And, and what a key is, is, is it's not really locked down wow, to a jig head. A you know, you fish. can change the weight. This is a one ounce right here. This is actually the tungsten rugby weight. And, and this just allows you to keep that swim bait on the bottom. So when you're fishing for those fish that are 20, 30, 34, 40 foot deep, you know, you need something that has a little bit more weight. And the cool thing about that is because you don't have that weight directly in front of the, of the fish or in front of the actual swim bait, when they grab it, they get straight hooked. So you don't lose them nearly as bad and you keep that bait on the bottom. You know, this bait has free swinging action. It has a really good action, really gets the most out of the swim bait. And when you have that weight down there towards the bottom, you know, allows that swim bait to really kick really well. Next up on the list is weedless swim baiting. Okay, now, of course, weedless swim baits have been a very popular way to catch fish. It allows me to fish my swim baits in more cover like we have behind me. Um, but right here, I actually have the bladed swim bait hook. And this is something that has become more popular for grass fishing, for anywhere around cover. When you're trying to emulate more of a of, of more bait fish profile or a shad spawn, you know, a lot of times on, on a lot of our lakes around the country, we have a shad spawn. This is going to really mimic a school of bait fish. So, you know, I've even fished this bait out deep, you know, whether it's around brush, or around stumps. This is something that allows you to, to be able to fish the bait more effectively up there shallower and then out there a little bit deeper. So, you know, this is a great substitute for a spinnerbait or a vibrating jig. You know, you really, it's a little bit more subtle approach, but you have a little spinner on there as well. You know, this is allowing you to do, show the fish something a little bit different. And a lot of times on our pressured fisheries, that's all it takes. So just having that little weedless setup allows you to do something a little bit different that the fish might not be seeing. And with 14 different colors, really have you covered no matter where you're at in the country or what the forage that those fish are feeding on. You know, whether it's a bluegill or it's, or it's shad or it's owlwife, yellow perch, or whatever it might be, we have those hues and the colors that you're gonna need for the situation that you're dealt with. And that's something that's really important. You having the right colors makes a huge difference when you're selecting your swim baits. Now we're switching gears a little bit to more trailers, you know, something that it's allowing you to add a little bit of more action to that particular deal. Like this right here, we have a vibrating jig, and that's one of my favorite ways to rig that little Largo Shad. You know, whether I'm fishing it around grass or whatever it might be, 
that's going to be, you know, that's definitely a good one. Another one that you got to think of is a swim jig. You know, you got swim jig with a swim bait profile. You're really allowing that bait to, to have a little bit more of a rocking action instead of throwing like a crawl trailer on there that has a little bit more of a, you know, has a little bit different, completely different action. So there's a lot of times picking up that profile of your trailer is going to make a big difference. And last but not least is my spinner bait. You know, I, I won, actually won uh, uh, several tournaments this year. One, one tournament you follow throwing a swim bait on the very back of, of, of a big spinner bait out deep. And sometimes having a little bit bigger profile, depending on the forage, especially on Tennessee River Lakes, you know, this allows for that bait to have a little bit bigger profile. You know, it, just a spinner bait by himself, you have a big blade. Um, you're trying to really match the, the, the gizzard shad that are out there offshore. And that's exactly what I do. When you upsize, I throw that little four inch on there and, and it really makes it like a, a larger offering to try to target those bigger fish. You know, because this Largo Shed has so much body, uh, you know, the, the big thing about that is it allows you to be able to skip that bait a little bit better, you know, more than a traditional swim bait because you have that so much flat surface on the side. And a lot of times when you hit that direction and skip that bait, it hits and skips like a rock across the water. So that's something that really is important to me as well is making sure that, you know, when I have certain applications that I'm trying to get up underneath overhanging trees or up underneath docks, that the, the, the bay is going to give me a, a few more skips or get me a few more feet up underneath that piece of cover to get that fish out of there. What makes a good swim bait a great swim bait is a couple main features, okay? The biggest thing, obviously, colors is a good thing, you know, that's definitely a plus, but action is number one. If the action does not work and consistent, then it's probably not gonna catch as many fish as, as the other guy. The key with this bait is it's soft enough that you're not, you're gonna have that consistent kicking action at the slowest speeds. If you stop, you let that bait fall, you're gonna have a consistent kicking action. Or if you're just crawling on the bottom, it's still going to be kicking, which is that's when you generate the bites. On top of that, you have the durability to catch more than one fish on that. That's one thing that's tough when you, when you spend your money, your hard earned money on, on a product, you know, you might have a really soft swim bait, but you really only get one or two bass out of it. The Largo Shad has the right amount of durability, the right amount of softness, to where you really get the best of both worlds. This bait is ready to go right out of the package, but there is one little modification that you can do to maybe give it a little bit more action. So you'll actually see in the very bottom of, of the Largo Shad towards the tail, you have this little flange that sort of connects the tail to that. What that does, it really keeps that, that tail more horizontal rather than having it come up a little bit. But you do sort of hinder the action just a slight bit, but it keeps it to where it's almost more natural in my opinion. But if you want a little bit more action, you want a little bit more kick, maybe if you're in dirtier water or whatever that might be, you can remove that little flange. You don't have to you know, grab any scissors or anything, just grab your hand, take that little flange, and then that's gonna allow it to have a little bit more free swinging action. So nothing crazy, but it's just gonna be a little subtle difference that can maybe make it have just a tiny bit more action and get a few more bites.